Good evening and welcome to the rest of the news. We have a tremendous uh, important program uh, lined up for you with uh, General Black as our guest and our uh, guest on Skype is uh, Glenn Spencer with the American Border Patrol and he's going to tell us a little bit about what's going on at the border and give us his thoughts about that. So. Um, we certainly appreciate your being here. Can you um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, American Border Patrol and who's in it and where it came from and what it's trying to do? Well, 13 years ago, I gave up on California. I was out there. We had such a serious problem with the illegal immigration problem. I decided to come out and make one last stand out here on the border. And I started up a nonprofit group called American Border Patrol. Before I did that, I came out and talked to a lot of people, including the recently retired head of the Tucson sector of the Border Patrol. American Border Patrol is a nonprofit, 501c3, really charitable organization. We're qualified to actually solicit support in every one of the 50 states. That means we're audited every year. We've been here 13 years. Uh, we have, uh, we're a in good standing in every state. We have regular donors, people who donate money to us. <clears throat> By the way, I earn no salary, so let's put that aside. And <clears throat> we have, the numbers growing up, nearly 20,000 people that we would consider our current donors. Now, what is the purpose of the American Border Patrol? I came out here 13 years ago to come right down to the border and to tell the American people what is going on here. And I set out, in fact, I made a video of what I planned to do then, and the plan was to include the use of technology uh, to communicate with the American people. And I was very fortunate that there was a young man here, and I'm right on the border here next to Fort Huachuca, right, the headquarters of Army Intelligence. Uh, and this was in 2002, one year after the 9-11 attack. Now, and it turns out, uh, there was a young man, he saw what I was doing, I was on television locally, and he saw that what I was planning to do, he saw my video online, and he called me up and he said, hey, I'm your man. And his name was Mike King, and he was an army sniper that had been activated to provide security for Fort Huachuca after the 9-11 attack. And of course, that was a year earlier, and he was just getting out. His tour of duty was finished. Well, it turns out he came over, and I found out that Mike King, who, when he was activated, was actually working in, as a, a nerd in Silicon Valley. Well, guess what? Mike is still with me. And 13 years later, an incredible technology later, and we have worked in those 13 years. He developed the first drone ever used on the board. He developed unique ground sensors, and we use incredible cameras and, and so forth. So our effort has been to communicate with the American people uh, using technology. Mm. In 2003, 12 years ago, we were on Lester Holt Live sending video from a drone out over to the American people that Mike had developed. And then we were on television again, and the next week the Department of Homeland Security suddenly discovered that drones could be useful on the border, and they got into it. So it was really Mike's technology that forced our government to pay attention. But that's the kind of thing that we do. And once again, I'm right on the border. I'm looking out the window here at a, at a building in Mexico where drugs are housed by the cartels. This is a very dangerous area. I'm looking at my window at a place on the fence where three weeks ago, $20 million worth of drugs were driven through that hole. How do I know that? I was driving along the border and looked over and saw the hole in the fence before the Border Patrol could fix it. And we did some investigation and we found out they had cut this hole in the fence very quickly. It's a cheap fence, driven three trucks through and they got away. So we're down here on the border, continuing. We have some new, exciting technology I can tell you about later. But our job is to inform the American people 
as to what is going on down here uh, so that they can make wise decisions. Now, what state are you in? We're in the state of Arizona. Arizona. Directly south of Tucson, Arizona. And if you're familiar with the area, Sierra Vista. I'm looking at the San Pedro River that actually flows out of Mexico uh, in uh, north into the Gila River and then into the Colorado. Now, my southern neighbor is Mexico. My, east, my eastern neighbor is the Bureau of Land Management people who uh, manage the river. Are, are you close to Nogales? No, Nogales is about 40 miles uh, west of here. Now, you know, um, we've heard a lot about a fence being built on the border. Right. And it's my understanding that it's really not been completed. Can you give us an update on what's going on with the fence? Well, in, in 2006, uh, President Bush signed the Secure Fence Act. We're going to build 700 miles of double layer fence. Well, I've been around <laughs> quite a bit. And I didn't think they were going to build it. I, I'm also a pilot, and I have a, a six place Cessna 206, which we equipped to do aerial surveys along the border. And I said, all right, I don't believe it. And so we started flying the border and documenting where the fence is. As, and anybody who wants to see where the fence is, go on AmericanBorderPatrol.com. And look over to the left, and you'll see something called Operation Beef, right? The beef is border enforcement evaluation first. And I said, if they're going to build a fence, we want to see where's the beef. Well, it turns out that, uh, just as I had suspected, they didn't do what they promised to do. And if you look at the map we have, you can see the map that we did from aerial surveillance and flying along the border and taking high-resolution photographs. You'll see detailed photographs all the way from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean, and most of the fence is a joke. It's mostly vehicle barriers that a five-year-old kid could walk through. Really? You say it's a joke? Yes. The fence they built over there, in 20 minutes they cut a hole through it, and three truckloads of drugs came through. The only reason, as I said, I know is I just had to run across it. Most of the fence is lousy. Wow. Now, what happened? How come that happened? I mean, I, why didn't they go ahead and do what they said they were going to do? Well, I, I didn't think they ever intended to do it anyway, but uh, in the dark of night, uh, about a year after they passed the Secure Fence Act, uh, during an omnibus bill that was being passed in the Senate, uh, Senator Kay Bailey Hutchinson of Texas threw in an amendment that allowed the Department of Homeland Security to decide where to build a fence. So in the original Secure Fence Act, they actually say in there, you have to have a double layer fence reinforced, and this is where it has to go. Well, Kay, Kay Bailey Hutchinson threw that out. No kidding. Yeah, she passed, she threw an amendment in, and if the people didn't vote for it, the whole omnibus bill, you know how that works, was gonna die. So they got it through. That turned the job of deciding what and where to build over the Department of Homeland Security, uh, Mr. Chertoff, and of course, uh, they stopped. They stopped building it. So they're not really serious about it at all? It never worked. Some people say that uh, a lot of this immigration and uh, executive immigration order is to get more people into the country that can vote for uh, Obama's socialist agenda. That's, 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 a lot of people think that's the case, and I, I have no reason to disagree with it. In fact, that, I, as I say, I've watched this for 23, I spent 23 years, by the way, full time, seven days a week on this issue. And absolutely, we saw it happen in California. Uh, California is now a Hispanic state, and they want the same thing to happen elsewhere. Essentially, these people are poor. They depend on government services, and they uh, will get those government services from the socialist state. Are, are members of the Congress and members of the Senate, are they really familiar with what you're doing and who you are and who the organization is? No. There's a reason for that. We're blacked out. Okay. Uh, 
The Southern Poverty Law Center has called us a hate group. Yeah, we're a hate group. So that's a red flag. Then no, no media will come down here. The newspapers will not cover us. We are never in anything. In the last five or six years, I'm a pilot and I fly people along the border. I've had 25 big news crews come down and I've flown them along the border. One of those was from the United States. Well, only one. You don't, one. You don't know about us because they don't want you to know about us. Right. I'll give you an example. Uh, two weeks ago, Senator Ron Johnson, who was the chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee, was having a hearing. <clears throat> and you can look this up on, online. And he started this hearing saying, I wanted to show you a map of where the fence is along the border. But I've been told it's law enforcement sensitive, and I can't show it to you. Now, wait a minute. Everybody, you can just go out on the border and look and see where it is. And so they were all dumbfounded that DHS told them he couldn't see, show people where the fence is. Well, I got the email of his assistant, sent her the link to our Operation Beef, and, and the, the response I got back was amazing. Well, that's just a small sample of how they don't want you to know, and the media play a lot of this. They don't want you to know what we're doing here because they don't want you to know anything about the border. They don't want the public to know about the government. Is that what you said? They, 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 don't, they don't want the public to know that half the, most, more than half of the fence on the border that they installed is useless, right? Uh, there are so much that they don't want you to know, uh, and it is an open conspiracy between the mainstream media and the Department of Homeland Security. They, they, they're lockstep, joined at the hip. They all agree, keep, keep the people stupid. You know, can, say if there was one of our listeners that wanted to donate to your cause, how would they do that? Well, you can do it online. You can go on AmericanBorderPatrol.com, and there's a place where you can click, you know, and, and, uh, and we appreciate that. Um, we, we have, uh, I think, done wonders for the country with a little bit, little bit that we have. Uh, the guys who are, like, once again, here's Mike King. He's a genius, right? Former Army sniper. He's been with me 13 years. That's dedication. This young lady I'm looking at over here, she works under the same roof. She's been with me 10 years. So we, we, we have dedicated people. And you can see some of the amazing things that Mike King and the other technical people who work with me. We are just now demonstrating a system we call the Sonic Barrier that was developed by a little company down here, and I can go into that, called Border Technology, that is better than anything the government has for border security. It detects ultralight aircraft every time. The government cannot do that. We've been testing that for four years. Have you ever heard of it? No. 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 no you won't. We can do, it can do things that our government can't even dream of doing. We've done this over and over again. You will not read about it. You will not hear about it. I think that might change, though, in the near future, because this last thing, the sonic area, also known as sidearm, seismic detection and ranging mechanism for, as, it's like sonar, radar, it's like sidearm, seismic detection and ranging. It's a brand new technology. And, and so sidearm, or we call it the sonic barrier, uh, you can install it on the entire border. Uh, it's buried. It's solar powered. You can't see it. It'll count and detect everybody, anybody, including vehicles or people who attempts to cross the border. Now the government hates this. Hates, Why? Hates. They hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because it's perfect accountability. It will show Congress what the situation is. And they do not want. Yeah, and the American people. Yeah, they don't want the American people to know. I mean, I gave a paper at a big government security conference 
uh, in uh, November of 2013, and you can link onto it. Too bad I just have a YouTube video. I go into detail uh, explaining exactly, in minute detail, how the Department of Homeland Security avoids accountability. It's very clever, they're brilliant, and uh, I explained it in detail. I know how they do it, and I know why the media won't talk about it. Now, the general was saying earlier that, uh, I don't know if we talked about this already, but the idea that they want a lot of uh, immigrants in America to, so they can build the welfare rolls. Is that? This is, uh, this has been the goal all along. That is, you're flooding us with desperately poor people and they will vote for socialists. And that happens to be the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party. And that's how they, if, if it were not for the amnesty that we've had in the past and illegal immigration, the Democrat Party today wouldn't exist. That they've just, you know, and other minorities and so forth, and people who are just not paying attention. So, yes, that's, I agree with the general, that's, that's their goal. And they're that's doing a, that. That's, a, that's amazing. We hear all about this, uh, oh, we've got to be uh, sensitive to the needs of other people and all of this. And, uh, but really, they're just trying to basically build the welfare role so they can bankrupt the country. Well, it's more than The Mexican government has designs on political control over parts of the United States. They want, they want Texas back. <laughs> they got California. Yeah. They do. In 1998, I attended the 150th anniversary of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which settled uh, the war with Mexico at the S Southwestern School of Law. And I was there when the Consul General of Mexico said, I th I'm saying this half serious and half joking, but we are practicing La Reconquista in California. That means we're taking it back. Uh, and by the way, I provided that to a reporter at the New York Times and a recording, and it made the front page of the New York Times. Sam Verhevik was a reporter. I've studied that. In fact, I produced a video 11, 12 years ago called Conquest of Aslan, in which I document how the Mexican government is working to subvert our immigration laws. What is, what is your opinion as to why the border uh, patrol uh, ha has moved the, the, the patrol actually back 20 or 30 miles from the border? Because they don't, you know, in the Secure Fence Act of 2006, it defined what the job of the Department of Homeland Security is. It said that the job of the Homeland Security is the prevention of all unlawful entries. You can look it up. They refuse to accept that definition. In the, right in, I have hearings where they say, we don't accept that. What's the law? So what they do is they don't want to prevent, they want to catch. Their objective is to apprehend anybody who is a serious threat to the United States. Over 30, I think over 50% of the apprehensions in the Tucson sector are beyond 30 miles from the board. Their theory is, let them pass and we'll try to catch the bad ones. That's what they do. That's what they do. In your opinion, in your opinion, is Congress and the Senate, are they on our side or are, are they just in the middle? They're bamboozled just like everybody else, uh, just like Senator Johnson. He's got up and said, I, I, I don't understand. Why can't I, why can't I show a map of the border fence? They bamboozle them. The media bamboozles them. You know, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Yeah. They don't listen. Yeah. That's why they don't want anybody down here to see what we're doing down here. That's bad because we know what's happening. Uh, we have experts down here who will tell you exactly, you know, where the fence is and why it doesn't work. And, you know, I have a neighbor over here, John Ladd. John's a good friend of mine. He has ten and a half miles of frontage on the border. John. And we work closely together. Uh, he, he, in the last, I think, two and a half years, he has proof of 43 
drug loads that have cut through the fence, driven across his, his property, cut all the fences, cows are running everywhere, and they caught one load, one truck. That, that, did you think the American people know that? Heck no. Who's going to tell us? Wow. Well, you know, uh, we make videos of these television programs, and we send them out all over our state, which is Kentucky, and we're now developing contacts in other states, and we're trying to uh, let people know, you know, what you're talking about, and to try to expose it. Uh, and let me just say this, here is a video of the last two programs, and I would like to send this to anybody who's listening right this minute, and uh, it's free, all of our videos are free, and uh, this, it's, this video is about uh, letting, you know, more and more Muslims, I mean, uh, yeah, Muslims into America. Uh, According to Phyllis Schlafly, there's been over a million let in already under the in the last few years, and uh, you know they have 22. According to Fox News, they had two broadcasts. They got 22 uh, terrorist training camps in the United States where they're training them, and. Uh, We'd like to send you this information, and if you want, we can even send you these articles which document all of this. Let me just say in, to any of our listeners, if you call right now, we'll get this out to you right away. The number is 893-2444. Just call that number right this minute, and if there's no one there, there will be an answering machine and give us our co your contact information and we'll get it right out to you. But the number again is 893-2444. And uh, if you want a copy of this program that uh, we're watching right now, you just uh, mentioned that on the, on the answering machine with uh, this program with Glenn Spencer and the American Border Patrol. And uh, we'll send you a copy of that too. Uh, Glenn, tell us once more where people can go to uh, donate to your cause here. Well, well AmericanBorderPatrol.com. Uh, we run every year. We run features and so forth. And by the way, you'll see there. You'll see an announcement of, uh, of a big uh, barbecue we have. It's called the Eighth Annual Flags Along the Border, uh, and it's going to happen July third and fourth. You can link to it up there. And this is going to be a very special year. We're putting out a great deal of effort. Uh, Mike King is going to be there to demonstrate what we call the sonic barrier or sidearm. And we're going to have aircraft flying in from Mexico. And, and I'll be the pilot, and I'm in co coordination with CBP radar, so there's no threat. Uh, and we'll actually fly the aircraft uh, across the border into the United States. You will hear sirens going off. But you, if you called the Custom and Border Patrol radar, they said, we don't know what you're talking about. And then we'll also have people who will be tech detected uh, as they approach the border 600 feet away, just from their footprints, from their footsteps. The Border Patrol has sensors that work at 30 feet. You will be able to see this both uh, on July 3rd and July 4th at our flags along the border. But what's flags along the border? Well, in 2008, uh, our members sent in little tiny flags and we attached them to what was then the barbed wire fence. And they each had a note attached to it from one of our supporters, you know, like close the border and, you know, you guys are doing a great job. We had, and we have photographs of this, 3,000 flags attached to the barbed wire fence. Well, that became a tradition. and. Each year, they would send in more flags. Well, right after that, and I'll tell you another reason, because we exposed the border right there. That They were so embarrassed by this whole effort that they actually built a strong fence right on our property. <laughs> One of the strongest fences along the border is on the American Border Patrol ranch. <laughs> That's the truth. 
So it's five miles wide, and then it ends, you know. And, but uh, they did, I can show you this, as soon as we got those flags up, and, and a camera we were using to expose them. Well, we did that year after year. And we have been, in the last oh, three years, we've been getting uh, 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 up to 10,000 flags sent in with these little notes. Well, this year is incredible. People are very upset about the border. Do you know how many flags we're going to have this for the July? 50,000 individual flags wow. sent wow. in by Americans. And we're building this huge God Bless America billboard where they're, and Mike is using our computerized machine that cut out everything. And we're going to have an exciting time on the 3rd and 4th of July here on the border. I got your letter in the mail. One of those flags is the one I sent in. Oh, well, thank you very much. 50,000. 50,000. Wow. <laughs> well, now, I got one quick question. We only got a minute left. Can you tell us, that, uh, in this letter I got from your organization, it says um, that uh, the Obama administration tried to shut you down. How did, tell us about that. Well, they stopped us from flying the drone, okay? Uh, they stopped us from going up certain roads. Uh, they do not want us to secure the border. I was chased out of the sky by two F-16s once. This is the truth. There was no reason for them to do that. They scared the poop out of us guys. I've had threats. This government, I went back and briefed the head of technology of the Customs and Border Protection a year and a half ago, showed him how we could detect ultralights crossing the border. And he, he had gone public to That's one of their biggest problems. Not interested. They don't want, they want anybody to know about it. So man, they, man. I, and I believe, and I, I, I have to be very careful with what I'm about to say, and I believe it's true. A big DOD contractor has been working with, with us for two years. They love this system. All of a sudden, they stop talking to us. Uh, Glenn, we're, we're all out of time. I want to thank uh, uh, Glenn Spencer and the American Border Patrol and General Black for being on our program and call in 893 2 444 to get a copy, free copy of this video. And uh, we certainly appreciate your good work. And God bless you. And tune in again next week for the rest of the news.